This video will continue with the work on complex numbers and I will focus in on another operator. That's an operator that allows us to find the power of a number, i.e. raise a number to a specific power. And I'll also be considering the square root function and how that will allow us to find the square root of numbers within Python. And we will introduce the math module. In the last video tutorial, I introduced the idea of a complex number and an example of a complex number is shown here and when we consider such a number we need to know that it consists of two components it consists of the real component and it consists of an imaginary component if you look at the real component you can see that's represented by 2 and if we look at the imaginary you can see that the number there is 5 but the fact that we have a J here that's what tells me that this is the imaginary part of the complex number so a complex number has real and imaginary parts if I continue with another example you can see this again is a complex number and I'm highlighting the real component of the number here and this is the imaginary component and if you look at the real component you can see it's 3.42 which means that we can have a number with a fractional part and if we look at the imaginary we can see that's 1.9 again showing that this can have a fractional part so we know a complex number can have in this position fractional numbers as we see in this example and a fractional number in this position and if we go back to the previous slide you will remember that the numbers did not have fractional parts but both the examples we've seen in this video are examples of complex numbers Let's consider this complex number that we've already seen in this video. And we know I've described this as being the real component. Now, mathematically, you will often see the pointing out of what the real component is as shown here, where this stands for the real component of this complex number. And we can see it's been made equal to 2, telling us that 2 is the real component. We know this is the imaginary part of the complex number, and you will often see this written down in mathematics as shown here, where the IM is an abbreviation for imaginary, and we want to know what the imaginary part is of this complex number, and you can see it is 5. Now that's quite important. You can see it's been made equal to 5, it is not usual to regard the imaginary part as being 5j. The j tells us it's the imaginary part, but the value of the imaginary part is 5. So you can see here I'm adding a note that it's 5, not 5j. Now, if we're going to understand complex numbers in Python as well as in mathematics, then we have to have a clear knowledge of how we can square a number and take the square root of a number. So knowledge of squared and square root is important if we're going to understand complex numbers. Let's consider this, and we can see it's 4 to the power 2. In other words, this here is the index, and that's the power of 2. So this means 4 raised to the power of 2. And when you have it raised to the power of 2, you say it is 4 squared. If I was to consider how I can find the square of a number in Python, we would need to look to an operator. And the operator is shown here. And what this will do, it will take 4 and it will raise it to the power of 2. Let's have a look at this computer program here. On this line, you can see that x has been assigned 4. So x is the name bound to the integer object 4. And on this line, on this side of the assignment statement, you can see I have x raised to the power of 2. So what this is doing in the context of this program is finding 4 squared. And whatever that result is will be assigned to y. So when I come onto this line, you can see here I'm using the f string to output what the value of x is when it's raised to the power 2. So we will find that this here will represent 4, 
and this string will then be output and this here represents what the value is when x is raised to the power 2 which in this case will be 4 squared so if we look to the runtime this is what we can see and that x has been placed here this string has been placed here and y which was calculated on this line to be 16 is output here now what I would like you to note is have a look at the 4 and the 16 and you can see they are both examples in this case of integers because there's no decimal point in either of the numbers. Now I mention that here because we're going to say that that's important for the rest of the video. To emphasize the operator that I've just considered, let's look at another example. This is 4 raised to the power of 3. And again, we can describe this as the index, and we can say that's raising the 4 to the power of 3. And of course, we can say this is 4 cubed. Now, if we were to look to Python to find the cubed of a number, what we can see with this example is how we can do it for 4, 4 to the power of 3, where this is the operator. In the previous video, I looked at four arithmetic operators. That's the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, and the division. This is another example of an operator that will raise to the power as we've already seen. But the key is it is an example of an operator. And the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, and the division together with this operator is built into Python. So if I ever want to perform the tasks that I've just described, you simply use, as in this case, the two asterisks following each other without a gap in the middle. And that becomes an operator that will help you raise a number to a specific power. Let's consider another example and here you can see I've got 7 raised to the power of 5 and if we were to consider the aspects of this we know this is the index and we know that is power of 5 and in Python that would look like you can see here 7 raised to the power of 5 where this here again is the operator carrying on we can look at this one which is the general way in which we can consider raising a number to the power where the number in this case is x and the y is the power that we're raising x to and again we can regard y as the index and if you were to see this in python it would look like this x raised to the power of y and again there is the operator let's consider four squared and let's look at the mathematics of this what this actually means is you take the value of 4 and then you take another value of 4. In other words, you're taking 2 as defined by the index and you multiply them together as you can see here. And of course, 4 times 4 is 16. What I would like to do now, I would like to find the square root of 16. In other words, this. And you can see I've got 16 and it is surrounded by the square root symbol. And what I need to ask now is what number can I find that when I get that number I multiply it by another number of the same value such that I will get 16 and of course we can work out from the fact that if you look here 4 times 4 is 16 so we can end up realizing that the square root of 16 is indeed 4 let's now consider this python program which will show us how we can find the square root of a number and i'm going to look at it one line at a time if we come to the first line here you can see i am importing the math module now the math module has within it definitions of various functions that we will find useful as Python programmers. And one of them is the square root function. So if I come onto this line, you can see x has been assigned 16. So x is the name bound to the integer object that has the value of 16. If we look to this line, y is going to be assigned the value that this finds. Now we need to be careful of what we mean by the value of what this finds. What you can see, we have dot notation. And the dot notation is telling me that on this side, I have to use the math module that was imported here. And from that math module, I wish to use this function, which will find the square root. And of course, I'm finding the square root of x, which in this case is 16 as defined on this line. And here, I'm using the f string to print out the square root of x and I'm saying it's going to be whatever y is so let's have a look at the runtime and you can see it says the square root of 16 
is 4 which is correct we showed that up here but that's pretty straightforward but i want to consider aspects of the python language that are going to be important as we move forward you see here when i defined x is assigned 16 straight away i need to think well what type am i using here what is x assigned 16 really telling me about the types well i've already said that x is the name that's bound to the 16 but it's bound to the instance of the integer class that has the value of 16 and here what i'm passing in is x so i'm passing in to this function 16 which is an integer what this then does it returns the value which we now have seen is 4 to y and this part of the program outputs it to give us 4 but look carefully at the 4 and you can see it's point 0 and when you see a 4 with a point and a 0 following it it is the value 4 but it's telling me that that is type float so what this function will do in this case it's taken in an integer but it returns a value which is a float so y will be bound to an instance of the float class that has this value here now when you're dealing with numbers in python you can just say well i'm dealing with four i'm dealing with four and a half seven point five one two whatever the value may be you have to as a python programmer also think what types you're dealing with because if you look at this square root we know we passed in a number that was an integer and what we got out was the result which was a float and that knowledge is important now just to home in on the functions the square root function what you pass in here has got to be a number and we've seen that that number can be an integer but by the way it could also be a float so i could pass in here two and a half and it'll tell me what the square root of two and a half is and that will be assigned to y and y will get a number returned to it whatever the square root of two and a half is and that number will be an instance of the float class so the square root will take in an integer or a float number and it'll return a float so the code that defines what the square root function does that's defined in the math module will be in the documentation and if you read the documentation it'll tell you things like this will find the square root of an integer or a float but it will return a float so one of the things you might want to ask yourself what if i made this x on this line equal to the string fred blogs and you come here and you attempt to find the square root of the string fred blogs in other words the name of something well it ain't gonna work is it and it's not gonna work because in mathematics what does the square root of fred blogs mean to start with but in the programming language this has been set up to work with certain data types and it's been set up to work with an integer and the float and it's been set up to return a float as the return value from the square root function so looking at this program i know x is an instance of the integer class and y is going to be an instance of the float class and what you pass in here cannot which it seems pretty obvious not be a string because it don't make any sense does it so let's consider the key points of this video tutorial we know that if we want to find the powers we use this operator here and this operator is built into python in the same way as addition subtraction multiplication and division are built into python however if i now want to find the square root we have to use the square root function and when you use the square root function it's not built into the core of python you have to import the math module and we've also learned that this square root function expects to have passed to it a number where that number has to be an integer or a float and the square root function will return a number and that number will be returned as type float and an obvious statement but i'll repeat it again you couldn't find the square root of a string because the square root of fred blogs well what does it mean in mathematics now why would somebody come along then and say well i don't know what the square root of a string is but i'm going to make this function find something well it doesn't it'll tell you there's an error so when you consider functions you need to ask yourself what can i pass to it and what will it return and you have to concentrate on the types and we know it'll allow you to pass in an integer type a float type but it gives a float back we've also in this video tutorial looked at a complex number again and realized that it has a real and an imaginary 
component. Before I finish this video, I'd like to leave you with a question. Consider this square root function and ask yourself, what would it do if I was to pass to it, not a float or an integer, what if you were to pass it a complex number? What do you think it would do? Check out the supporting website for these videos. In addition, why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video?